Time, uh, velocity time graphs. Yeah. Okay. Right. Dropbox. DIFC. Workbook and slide. Oops. Physics. Mechanics. Equations. Right. Okay, if you can write this down, the kinematic equation for motion. Is this a word you've anyone seen before? Kinematics? You've seen this one before? <coughs> What's it mean? Kinematic um, energy. Not, not, not only uh, energy. Like, what does the word kinematic mean? Movement? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we're, we're, we're looking at movement here. Okay. So, just to be precise with our language. Uh, uniformly accelerated linear motion. What type of motion is that? It's motion that is number one in a straight line. Now, which part of that means a straight line? Linear. linear. Okay. That's the linear part. Uh, has a constant acceleration. What uh, <coughs> word means that? Uniformly. Yeah, uniformly accelerated means uh, a constant one. And this is actually a very common situation in physics where you have something accelerating uh, constant, uh, constant acceleration. Yeah, the acceleration is not changing. Which means if you picture the graph, what type of graph is that? If the, what part of the graph is the acceleration? What did we say last time? Slope. The slope, yeah. So it means the slope isn't changing. Horizontal. Uh, not just horizontal, linear. Graphically, this makes a straight line on the velocity time graph. Because that means that a constant slope. Okay. So, uh, you'll have to write something down from this slide. Now, you don't have to write this part down. You could just draw it. You know what, Simba? I think it is shawarma day. I think I think that is what I want for lunch. Yeah. I decided. Shawarma top kebab. Huh? Shawarma top kebab. Uh, ah, well, no, sometimes, you know, a nice spicy kebab is what you need. All right, we have this? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, like I said, this is actually probably the most common motion in physics, the uniform acceleration. So let's have a look at that, what that means. Uh, okay. Let's have a look at the graph. Okay, so here is time and here is velocity. So it starts at U, and if it's uniform, it means it uh, accelerates, so it must be a straight line. Okay. If it does this, this is bad because it means the acceleration changed. Okay. So the acceleration is constant. Then uh, this point here is t. Okay. Uh, and then, oops. There we go. 
Right, so first things first, let's see what we can say about the slope. So we can say A is um, this point here, which we said is TV, and this one here is uh, 0U. So the A is V minus U over, now actually, TV sorry, U. Yeah, before I, <coughs> before I continue with this, I actually want to just take one step back for a moment. Uh, because I just remembered last time we were looking at the triangle. Uh, this is the uh, the distance, the speed, and the time. Yeah. yeah. So what's the distance equal to? Speed times yeah, speed multiplied by time. So let's try and write this using letters. So the distance is kind of like the f. Yeah. Uh, and the time is exactly the t. But I want to know, what can I do about this? Because in this problem we have two speeds. We have a u and we have a v. So which do I use? Do I use u or do I use v or do I use something else? What could we do to try and solve it? Maybe we could use v minus u, yeah. But it's not that, I'm afraid. Something else perhaps. So if you had two things and you have two things, u and v, and you can only use one thing, what should we do to the two things? No. 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 So I'll tell you this: in physics and chemistry and biology, there's a trick. If your formula only lets you use one value, but you have two values, then you use the average. So what's the average of? That's it, yeah. So you just have u plus v over 2. Okay, so this is our first equation, and I call this one equation... No, actually, 0. Uh, and the reason it's equation 0 is because it's coming from something <coughs> as basic as the triangle. So this formula is to find the distance? Yeah, or you could rearrange it to find the time. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. So now let's go back to what I was saying here. Sorry. So uh, we were saying that uh, A is V minus U over T minus zero. Okay. Yeah. So we can say A is V minus U over T. Mm -hmm. So we could say AT equals V minus U. So we can say V equals u plus a t. This is our next equation. We we'll call this one equation one. Oh, I should say, in the exam, these proofs they could ask you to prove. However, they have never asked it. So it's on the syllabus. But in the last, you know, 12 years, the 24 exams, uh, I've never seen them ask you to actually to prove it. They did ask us in high school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And technically they could ask you for this exam, but they never have. Okay. So this is to find the sign of the Yeah, or again... U or A or T, if you rearrange it. Okay, okay. Shall we look at the next equation? Um, the next one I'll go for is the area. So what does the area represent? I think we should remember. The distance, yeah. So let's see what we can make. So I can say S equals the rectangle area. What would that be, this piece? What's this area? 
Yeah, yeah, I, well, I mean like what would it equal? What letters? UT. Yeah. yeah. And then what would be this one? The triangle, so what would it be? A half? Yeah, what's the base? T. T. And the height? V minus U is the height. Here to here. Yeah? So S equals UT plus a half T. But if I use equation 1, I can replace the V with U plus AT minus U. Now the reason for doing that is because the U's cancel. Mm -hmm. So you just have AT. And what's T times T? Try again. T squared. T squared, yeah. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Mm -hmm. That's equation two. Okay. So it's all proven just from one equation? Well, pr pretty much from just one equation or from the basic triangle. Yeah, you could use it to find the distance. Okay. We got that? Yeah? Yeah? Right. Next. So, uh, let me just... For the next and final equation, I'll take this line here and just change that into T equals V minus U over A. Okay? And then we have the equation S equals, I think we said, U plus V over 2 times T. That was equation 0. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in there for T. <coughs> so now I have S equals U plus V over 2 times V minus U over 2. Okay, so uh, that can be, let me just continue down here, S equals, uh, oh sorry, I said 2 here, I should have said A. So 2 times A is 2A, U times V is UV, U times U is U squared, V times V is V squared, and then V times U is UV. Well, that's good because the minus UV and the UV cancel. I can bring the 2A up. So I have 2AS equals V squared minus U squared. So finally, I get V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. That is equation 3. Got that? <coughs> so, uh, have some of you seen these formulas before? Kind of. Yeah, you have? Yeah. Kim, have you seen this before? Yeah. Um, have you seen this before? Is this new or old? Maybe, okay. And for you? All right, okay. Have you studied physics before? Yes. Um, 
just so you know, in some countries they write it like Bf equals Vi plus At. Yeah, 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 yeah. In some countries, yeah. Okay, so, uh, continue. Uh, the proofs could be on the exam. So to summarize, we have S equals U plus V over 2 times T, V equals U plus AT, S is UT plus a half AT squared, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. These are the basic ones. To solve any problem, we require to know at least three of the five letters. Okay? U, V, A, T, S, we must know three of them to solve. U, V, A, T, S, we must have three of them. Uh, these problems are often called SUVAT problems, because you can spell S-U-V-A-T. However, I always call them U-V-A-T-S problems, because that's what my teacher called them. And I, I just don't feel right about calling them SUVAT. Uh, so U-V-A-T-S problems is what I call them. Uh, they're also called kinematic equations of motion, which is the name of the lesson. Equations of motion. But now, most importantly, is let's have a look at an example. Okay? So what I want you to do, I don't want you to solve this. I just want you to read this and write down UVATS, the information that I give you. I want you to read it and figure out what I tell you, UVATS. Okay? So read and write the UVATS down. So a girl is about to start is about to start cycling her bicycle. She is at rest and cycles to 9 meters per second in a time of 6 seconds. Okay, do we know the U? Yes. yes. Yeah, what's the U? Yes. Zero. Do we know the V? Yes. No. Well, we do actually. What's the V? Nine. Nine. Do we know the A? No. no. We need to work it out, yeah. Uh, do we know the T? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Six. Six. And do we know the S? No. no. So let's write this down. Okay. U is zero. V is nine. A we don't know. T is six. And S we don't know. If I want how far, that means I want the S. Look at your equation. Tell me which equation I could use to get S. Which one could I use to get S? Squared. Do you think V squared equals U squared plus 2AS? No, because we don't know the A or the S in that equation. No, the U V squared might... Um, equation U. Yeah. S equals U plus V over 2 yeah. times T. Yeah. S equals U plus V over 2 times T, which is 27 meters. Right. How could I get the acceleration? What would be the easiest one to use to get the acceleration? I think it would just be... Yeah, you could use the V equals, or even the V, the v minus U equals, if you want. So, V equals U plus A T. So, 9 equals 6A. So A is 9 over 6, 3 over 2, 1.5 meters per second squared. So do you see here, I give you U, V and T, and you could easily find A and S. We found those. Are we happy with this? It's not too bad, I hope, yeah? So far. So far, so far. Okay, continue. <coughs> so I'm going to give you one to try. There's just one extra thing in it that you need to do for me. I've given you the uh, speed in kilometers per hour. And of course you need to be using meters per second. So before you even begin, you have to change 120 kilometers per hour into meters per second. Okay. So once you do that, then you can start. I'm looking for the A, 
and the T for this problem. Okay, try this one by yourself. Let's see if you can do it. These are all real numbers. Um, in Ireland, the motorway speed limit is 120 kilometres per hour, and the Road Safety Authority, they do say it takes 100 metres to stop at this speed. Sorry, Kim, you had a question? Go ahead. Do you know what does it mean? It means if you're travelling 120 kilometres per hour, it will take you a hundred meters to stop if you put your foot on the brake. So if you're driving and put your foot on the brake, it will take you a hundred meters before you stop. So that's what it means, bring the car to rest at this speed. It's, it's how long it will take you to stop. How's this going now? Any questions? Do you, do you understand it? Uh, what's 120 kilometers per hour in meters per second? 33.3? Okay, so U is 33.3. What's the B? Zero. Zero. What's the A? Don't know. What's the T? Don't know. What's the S? 100. Is this okay? You look confused. <laughs> Did you get the U V A T S? The U? This is the U. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Sure. This is the U. The V is zero. V is zero. V is zero, yeah. The A, we don't know. The T, we don't know. And the S, the S is 100. Yeah? Let's have to see what you wrote. Good. That's the U, V, T, yeah, S, 100. Good. So because you have 1, 2, 3, mm -hmm. you have enough. Yeah. You can get the uh, A. So uh, which formula Which formula can give us the A? Um, not this one. Maybe this one. Maybe this one. Yeah, maybe this can give us A. Because we know the V. We know the U, we know the S, so we can get A. Maybe. Do, does anyone have an answer yet? For both? Yeah? Okay, let's, let's, let's write down the info at least. So U is... Oh, uh, the U is... 33.33. In the exam, for your cal guys, could you just actually 
important if you can listen for one minute. Remember last time we said your answer must be three digits, three significant figures. For, for your calculations, you can use more than three. It's only the final answer that must be three. So uh, for you, I'll use 33.33. Uh, it, is, it is 333, isn't it? It does yeah. repeat, yeah. V is zero. A we don't know. T we don't know. S is 100. So if I use my formula V squared, okay, I'll have V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Yeah? So the A is minus 33.33 squared over 200. Uh, what is that, please? Minus, do you have an answer? Matt? 5.54. Yeah, yeah. 5.54 meters per second squared. Or 5.55 maybe if you had more decimals. Yeah. Okay, and what do I want next? Uh, the T. What's the best for the T? I could say V equals U plus A T. So the T is 33.33 over 5.54. What's that? 7, is it? 6? Oh, yeah, sorry, 6. 6 seconds. Six seconds is a long time. Think about this. You're driving on the motorway. You're going at full speed. Uh, you see a cow in front of you that's fallen onto the road. And you put your foot on the brake. It'll take you six seconds to stop. And I promise you, when you're going that fast, about to hit a cow, we'll say, uh, six seconds will feel like a long time. You know? One, two, three, four, five, six, as the cow gets closer and closer to your window. Uh, I've never had that happen, but I've had, had um, it happened at least once that I was driving and somebody pulled out in front of me and I really had to stop really hard. And it's the only time it's ever happened, but I, I had to had to brake so hard the engine turned off. Yeah. Because the car is automatic. So it's an automatic car, so you don't have to worry about the clutch pedal. But I didn't know this. If you brake hard enough, you you can... It can it, it turns the en I don't know how, but the engine turned off. I had to turn it, turn it back on. Uh, so, uh, anyways, my point is, six seconds is actually a very, very long time, if you really think about it. Very long time. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Next one now. Uh, a ball is dropped from the top of a school building. Okay. So I'll draw this for you to help. So the ball is dropped here. The building is 25 meters high. And it takes 2.26 seconds for the ball to hit the ground. So it, it falls down here, okay? So you have U, V, A, T, S. And the U is zero. And um, what's the V? Do we know or not know? We don't know. We don't know. And we don't know the A, or at least I haven't told you the A yet. And um, what's the S? Yeah. No. Now, okay, you can use 20... N no, no, you can use 25, but I prefer to use minus 25. Downwards. Because it's downwards. Because it's, it's going down, not going up. Because I would like my story to be going up with me and S is plus 25. Okay? So, my question here is, what's the A and what's the V? And I'd like you to try this one. So first I want the first I want the A, then I want the V.
Okay. Um, what's the A? Did you get the A? What, what formula should we use for the A? Um, S, S equals? U T? Great. S equals U T plus a half A T squared. So A will be minus 50 over 2.26 squared. Is it about minus 9.8? What, what did we get for the A? 9.789. So that's 9.79 then. Yeah? 9.79. So minus 9.79. Okay, and what can give me the V? Uh, we could just go with V equals U plus A. 9.79 times t, which is 2.26. So what do I get for the v? Uh, minus 20, is it? 22? Minus 22.1. Now why is the v minus? It's because it's going down when it hits the ground. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, 9.78, not not. Okay, I won't worry too much about that. Right, here's Mary. Mary's dropping a ball off a cliff, and what she notices is the ball goes travels faster and faster. So at the beginning, the ball's at rest. Then after one second, it's roughly 10. Then after another second, it's going at 20. Then after another second, it's going at 30. Then after four seconds, it's going at 40, and after five seconds, it's going at 50. So it's going faster and faster and faster. So when she drops the ball, its speed increases by 10 meters per second each second. So that means the acceleration is roughly 10 meters per second squared. In fact, we know the precise number when you drop when, when something is dropped. Yeah, 9.81. The acceleration due to gravity, that is the acceleration because you drop something. On the surface of the Earth is represented by the letter G. And g has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. And we usually put in the minus to indicate down. So g is 9.81, and this is the acceleration because something has fallen. So it's always negative? I, uh, no, 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 you can use positive. It's just that for me, I try to stick to always using negative. This is the value of a when something has fallen to earth, when you drop a ball, for example. Okay. So can you make note of this value, acceleration due to gravity? I just, 9.81 is the key thing to know here. Right, uh, I think we have one question left, but it's actually quite, quite a big question. So we'll do this one together. A ball is thrown up by a girl at a speed of 50, and the ball leaves her hand at a height of one. So let me draw that for you. Okay, so, um, mm -hmm. oh, I need to fix my writing pad. Right, here's our girl. Now you can know she's a girl because she's wearing a dress and I coloured her in red. There. Uh, she throws the ball vertically upwards from a height of one metre. So this here is one metre. Okay, so far. Uh, and her speed, she throws it up back, is an impressive. 50 meters per second. Uh, the ball leaves her hand, the ball travels up, then stops and falls back to earth. So think about what happens. It goes up. I'll just draw it as a curve. It goes up, 
it'll stop and come back down and hit the ground. That's what I'm going for here. The girl does not does not catch the ball, so it doesn't go back to her hand. She lets it fall to the ground. Okay. So the first question is, what is the maximum height of the ball? So we want to know what is this. Okay. So let's do this together. Do we know the U? Mm -hmm. We do. It's 50. Do we know the V? Yeah, well, actually, we kind of do because we're looking at when the ball is up here. And when the ball is up here, the V is actually zero because it stops yeah. and it comes back down. Uh, do we know the A? We do because it's a ball falling. It's minus 9.81. Do we know the T? No. And do we know the F? No. And in fact, F is what we want. So I'll let you get me the F. Tell me what the X is. What's it going to be? V squared equals U squared plus 2AS will do it. Dokey, what do we get for S? Say again? One two, one, two, seven. Did you all get that for S? Uh, I'll double check on my calculator. Come on, calculator. Right, you did fit. Uh, one to seven point four. Okay. Well, anyways, if you round it off, uh, it's one to seven to three significant figures. One to seven is wrong. You all made a mistake. One to eight. One to eight. Why? Three significant figures. Uh, no, not that actually. Be yeah, the S tells you how far it is at the end compared to the start. If that's 127 meters, then the height is 128. Oh, okay. Yeah, see? So the S is 127, but the height is 128 meters. Okay, see, I tricked you. Right, next part. How long until the ball hits the ground? So to go from here to here. Okay, let's write down our info. What is the U? So this is part two. What's the U? Come on, what's 50. the U? 50, good, good, good. What's the V? Yeah, yeah. well actually we don't know. We don't know how fast it hits the ground here. You don't know the V. What's the A? What's the T? Don't know. In fact, uh, that's what we want, isn't it? And finally, what's the S? 127 plus 128. No. No. Get students every year. I'll tell you and you'll go, Nope. Hold on to your seat. Get ready for this. The S is minus 1. 
Why is it minus 1? Where is it at the end compared to the start? It is 1 meter below the start. Mm. So the x is minus 1. You see? You see, every year in the exam, this is the mistake the students make. They think the x is 127 plus 128. But it's not. The x is just minus 1. Yeah. Now, does that make sense, though, the minus 1? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So I want you to get me the t. Get me the t, please. Okay, what formula gets us the t here? Is it s equals? Yeah. S equals u t. Okay, so s equals u t plus a half a t squared. Oh, uh -huh, interesting. Uh, 4.905 t squared minus 50 t minus 1 equals 0. What type of equation is that called? Ah, no, I'm not saying okay. this. You're mixing up your words. Quadratic. Did you learn how to solve this in maths class? How to solve this? What's the no, the curve. Yeah, but did you learn how to solve it? How to find the answer? What what method did you learn in class? Square root. Using the square root? Factorizing. Yeah. Now we can't factorize this, sadly. Did you learn the formula? No, we didn't learn the formula part yet. But you know the formula I'm talking about? Minus b plus minus. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you never use it. Not yet. Maybe no. next class. Anyway, let me show you something cool. On your calculator, you can be pig lazy and uh, just do this. Yeah. You know already. Yeah. Mow it. Oh yeah. Fifty tray. You can type in four point nine oh five. Enter. Minus fifty. Enter minus 1, enter, or equals, uh, and we get two answers for t, 10.2 or minus, okay, not the minus, so uh, the answer for t is 10.2. So this is they have to ask us to, the working for In the marking scheme, in the exam, uh, he doesn't seem to care about the working for this. Now, that's not true in maths. In maths, you'll be tested um, to show your working. But whenever you have a quadratic in physics, he's quite happy, I think, just to have the answer appear as if by magic. Okay. How do that again the Mode 53. Oh, not on that calculator. I'm sorry, that calculator is lame. Oh, his calculator is better. But that's all this. Mode 53. Yeah. Mode 53. So you can type in A, uh, B, C. And then, to go back to normal mode is mode 1. Mode 1. Yep, yep, great, great. Part C. How far does the ball travel? Part C, give me the answer. How far does the ball travel? Go on, you'll tell me. No. 
Yeah. How did you get that? I added it. What two did you add? Very good. So that actually is how far it travelled. It travelled two five five meters. Okay, good. Um, okay. So the distance is two five five meters. Okay. Part uh, D. Part D is I want to know how fast is it going when it hits the ground, which means I just want to get back here uh, the V. So what will give me the V? Uh, v equals U plus A T. That's no problem. So what's that? No, no, I'm sure you typed something in wrong there. Ah, yeah. Minus 50. Yeah. So minus 50. Yeah? Now, that's actually not the answer. The answer is plus 50 because of something in my grammar. Why am I saying the answer is plus 50 and not minus 50? No, no, it is actually going 50 down into the ground. Yeah, no, no, he has it. What is it? Yeah, because how... Now, listen carefully, English time. How fast means, like, how big. And how big means magnitude, positive. So, 50, not minus 50. Okay? So, you need to be careful with this in, in the exam. And lastly, what was the average speed? So the average speed is the total distance divided by the total time. Average speed is total distance over total Time. What did you say the total distance was earlier? 200 and... 225? And the time is... 255. Oh, 255. And the time is 10.2, isn't it? So what's that? About 25 meters per second? Oh, it's exactly 25. Now... That's the average speed. At the beginning, is it going faster or slower than the average? Faster, faster at the beginning, because <coughs> it's going 50. But what happens? Slows down, stops. Yeah. Then it falls. falls and speeds up. So on average, its speed is 25 meters per second. Okay? But of course, that's an average. It changes. Uh, over the journey. Yeah? Okay. Great, great. Okay, uh, and that's that one done. Wonderful. So, um, just for, oh, we'll just say five, ten minutes. I want maybe five, yeah, five, max ten. I want you to tr get a start on these. And then, after you try these for a few minutes, we'll have a tutorial. We can have a look at the questions you found difficult from your homework, and we can do them on the screen, okay? So if you can try, uh, try these now. How many did I give you? No, only, only seven. Was it? Yeah, only seven. Can I close this? Mm -hmm. Do you mind putting the light on? I think we need it now. Thank you.